What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be doing a very basic compositing breakdown of our aerial explosion render that we made in our last tutorial video inside of Blender. Because I usually use After Effects to composite my explosions with some glow, motion blur, and glare, I will be using After Effects in this video. However, at the end of this video, I will be showing you a very basic way you can add some glow to your explosion inside of the Blender compositor as well. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects. As you can see, we have a very basic composite here with only a few layers we have our background layer which is essentially just this gray solid then we have our explosion render which we've added some effects to as you can see above here then we have a duplicate of our aerial explosion render as well which I set under the add layer mode which increases the brightness of the bright spots of the image and then on the top here I have an emission pass of our explosion which I will show you how to export from blender as well at the end of this video if you would like to use that as well Anyways, this is our final result here. Let's just play through it. And it's pretty cool. On the top here, this is also just a basic color correction adjustment layer, which essentially just boosts the contrast a bit to give us a little bit more of a uh, interesting look. All right, let's get started. Let's go ahead and hide our top layers here. And our first layer here is simply just our explosion, as I said before, but we've added quite a few adjustments here on the top. I'll go ahead and deselect everything except for the top layer. And we'll go ahead and find a spot of the explosion that uh, has some flames as well as some smoke in it, maybe right here. All right, so first we added a curves effect to our explosion. So that essentially just kind of brought up the bright spots of the image and then deepened the shadows of our smoke. Then next we adjusted the hue and saturation of our explosion. I kind of stole this technique from Andrew Price's explosion compositing video that he did years ago using uh, fume effects and after effects as well. And I'll link that video in the description if you want to take a look at that. But essentially what we've done here with the hue and saturation node is we've remapped some of the color channels to get a little bit more of a fiery red look versus the kind of orangish explosion that we had initially. And the orange flames look really awesome as well, but for this specific example, I wanted to add a little bit more red fiery look to our explosion so that's why I added this hue and saturation technique and uh, what we've done here is we went to the red channel under the hue and saturation control and I adjusted the red hue a little bit and then I decreased the red saturation as well as the red lightness so as you can see it, it deepens that color a little bit then I went to the yellow channel and I boosted the yellow saturation and then decreased the yellow lightness. And uh, as you can see here, you can get a really cool result when you start remapping some of these values. It starts to change the explosion quite a bit. So just keep in mind that when you're outputting your explosion from Blender, that's not your last step. That's something where you can really enhance the details and the image data from that explosion to get a different look inside of compositing. And that's where a lot of the magic happens. So anyway, the next thing I did to this first layer here is I added some radial blur. As you can see here, I actually keyframed that to go up near the beginning of our explosion. Our radial blur kind of just pushes some blur outward from the center of our explosion to kind of blend it into the background a bit better and make it a little bit more realistic. Anyways, after adjusting the radial blur and keyframing that to go up and down near the end of our blast, we added several glow layers. The first layer I added was with a higher threshold value and a lower radius. And essentially what the threshold value does is it tells how bright a pixel needs to be before it starts adding glow to that pixel. So essentially by increasing this glow threshold, we're telling the computer to add glow to only the brightest parts of the image to an extent. And then if we decrease this threshold value, we would be telling the computer add glow to more of the image including some of the darker points of the image as well so kind of play around with this as you can see if i move this down we start getting more glow in the image but we start getting glow in some parts of the explosion that we don't really want we want to just add glow to the most fiery parts of the flames so that's why we adjust this and then of course the glow radius is how big that glow is going to be so essentially as we increase that we start increasing the radius of our glow and then of course the glow intensity i usually leave the glow intensity at one and then i've also changed the colors of my glow to be yellow and orange 
Anyway, I added a second glow effect to this layer, which was a much larger radius and a smaller threshold, essentially bringing up the brightness of the entire explosion a little bit more. I didn't lower the threshold too much as I still wanted to get only the fire to glow, but this is just something that I experimented with and it gave a little bit nicer result when I added glow to the overall explosion kind of emanating from the center of the blast. I also have a curves effect here, which actually is not doing anything as you can see here. So actually we don't even need that. So I'll go ahead and delete it. And then I have a tent, which I was essentially just trying to add a little bit of blue to our explosion to create a little bit more of a cooler look. That's pretty non-essential. That's just a personal preference. After doing all of these effects on our initial layer, on the second layer we composited on top of this, we added a few effects as well. We did the same hue and saturation effect that we did on the layer below, essentially remapping the color values to get a lighter yellow and a deeper red. Then I added a curves effect to this one to deepen the shadows a bit so that this would be mostly affecting our flames. Then I added a glow to this one as well. A very similar technique. I increased the glow threshold and increased the glow radius as well because essentially this layer that we're trying to composite on top of our original is something where we want to enhance the glow a little bit more in a more subtle way. Then I added some camera lens blur to uh, essentially just enhance the glow a little bit since this layer is just for the glow. And then I also added a radio blur near the beginning of our blast keyframed to uh, give it some motion blur on that initial eruption. Alright, so finally the last layer we have here is the emission past and if I select to show this layer only, as you can see here, the emission past is essentially only the brightest spots of the image. So it's just only the flames that are shown. So exporting an emission past from Blender is one way you can just isolate the flames and only add glow to them. Um, it's not always necessary as you can see. If I don't use it, we still get a pretty cool fiery result, but something that can enhance your explosion and uh, give it a little bit of punch to depending on what environment you're compositing your explosion in. Anyway, I composited this emission past and I keyframed the opacity of it to go up near the beginning of our explosion and then come back down near the end of our blast. As you can see, it gets a little bit blown out here, which might not be what we want if we're compositing this in a brighter environment, but it still adds a little bit of punch as you can see here to uh, enhance those flames a little bit. So on this emission past layer, I uh, increased the brightness quite a bit under the curve setting. I essentially just brought the shadows down of the emission pass so that only the brighter parts of the image would be enhanced with the curve setting. And then I added a glow similar to, I added a glow to the other two layers, but with a much larger glow radius and a different threshold. Then I also, as you can see here, added a little bit more red to this emission pass to add that red look as well. And then finally I added a camera lens blur, which is uh, pretty subtle, but just gives it a little bit more of a glow effect. And uh, yeah, finally I added on top of this an adjustment layer which essentially just brought it all into the scene together and uh, got this final result. I was uh, pretty happy with this result. Of course, a lot of experimentation goes into compositing the flames into their environment, so you need to play around with the threshold of your glow settings quite a bit. It's not a simple task, but it's one that when done correctly, you can create a very awesome result. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Before I end this video, I want to give a shout out to Jonathan Crone's channel where he makes pretty awesome Blender videos and recently made a small scale experience explosion tutorial utilizing the chaos add-on as well so be sure to check out his channel and give him some support as well i will be uploading a very basic tutorial showing how to add some basic glow and glare to your explosions inside of blender so stay tuned for that as well i'll see you guys next time